I'm actually pretty impressed with the way the feed room and now the tack room we're kind of using as a kind of a tack room has come out. Uh, I also have a few tools that I set in here. Everything for the most part is good. I do want to talk about one small issue and I'm going to have to address this at some point with Ellie and Megan. Um, it's becoming a bigger issue the longer we wait. Normally when we do a barn clean out we take the tractor and we take the forks and we or even the bucket and we'll remove all of the feeds here we'll put them in the bucket and move them out of the way of course the horses are moved off the pasture and we take these um pallets out because underneath the pallets you have a lot of spilt grain you have spilt grain and then what happens is as that grain gets spilt, uh, sometimes we'll come out here and we'll blow it or we'll spray it. And it makes, it makes it look nice and clean. It makes everything look nice and clean. But in fact, you're not able to get all them grains out of there. It becomes a breeding ground. I almost said cesspool, but I don't know if that's an appropriate word or not. But it becomes a breeding ground for flies. And if flies are not bad enough as it is, you don't need to have food laying around for more flies. So what we have going on over here is a little bit of jockeying for, this is kind of, I'm not gonna say food aggressions, but we have a little bit of jockeying for position now that the grains are starting to run low. Everyone, my friends, everyone's healthy. You don't have to think that there's anyone out here who's hungry. We're blessed that our grass has turned back nice and green. We put out hay for our horses. They also have green hay, uh, flakes of green hay we feed. And then of course we feed grains once a day. But they like those grains. They, they do, they like those grains. Let me show you what we're feeding them. We're trying to, and this has been instructed by our vet. It's a, a controlled starch and sugar feed pelleted and extruded horse feed. That's what, that's what they're all eating. And that was a suggestion from our vet. We're not trying to, to encourage you all to go buy the same thing. We are not sponsored and have nothing to do with Purina. We don't get any breaks or discounts on our feeds. I promise you that. But uh, that is what we were told to feed up because in fact, Bucky's and Voodoo 
or both a bit overweight. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, it begins to show itself in the joints. And anyone that knows horses knows that these guys are in fact a bit overweight. And you gotta be real careful with that because over, being an overweight horse, uh, you could end up with a whole lot of other issues. And I've got bit, I got bit again. I'm fine. I am fine. No, you only get two of You can only have two of those at a time, sweetie. If you knew how crazy that makes people, it's kind of scary, actually, to know. I'm just going to call it a sickness. <laughs> I'm just going to write it off as a sickness when you can let something that happens in someone else's home affect you so much that it brings out the worst in, in you. And so, I think that that's kind of sad that we've gotten that way as a, as a, as a, as a people that you can't let, you can't allow people to just be themselves. And so, we demand to have, it has to be our way in politics. There's no room for anyone else's opinion besides ours it has to be that way with religion there's been there have been wars fought over religion y'all obviously wars are fought over the nation nation's best interest and isn't it ridiculous that people will go to war and fight and kill because they feel like they are right and so this is not that kind of a page i'm a survivor sanctuary belongs to Lester Eugene Morrow Jr. That's me. Uh, and so ultimately, it is Lester Eugene Morrow Jr. who makes the decisions of what happens. And I choose not to scream, holler, throw rocks, throw buckets, raise my voice, shout at the top of my lungs, and show Rita that I am in fact above her I think that there might come a time when you have to take steps but she's still very new here and while she's very new here I'm going to hopefully allow her to learn her way around by watching the other horses by watching the donkeys by watching even the alpaca by knowing that she can be loved and that she has a she has the freedom to say no, she has the rights to say no. I want to show y'all what we're getting prepped and ready for here at I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. Uh-huh, you know what's up. It is the month of October. And that means it's time to put out our winter ryegrass. We brought this back over from Longhorn Lester where we got all of our seed planted this past weekend. And uh, what we're gonna do is uh, find our way to tractor supply. And we're going to plant ryegrass in all three of our front pastures. We'll probably make a couple of passes across the front yard here, just keep it pretty. We're gonna probably go across in my dad's pasture over here, just to make sure that this an these animals have a nice supply of winter grasses. Uh, don't forget that Billy, his girlfriend or wife, and they have a calf now, all eat over here kim's goats will also join in sometimes and then we'll go back into our back two bullpen pastures and so i'm thinking five bags is what we'll go through over here and that will keep the uh, the gist of the property nice and green through the winter months but problem well first of all you all know that the grass we have here chickens and roosters the grass we have growing now will be good until we have our first frost and at that first frost all of this is going to turn brown and it will stay brown to... y'all need to just hush it up while i'm working and then it'll stay brown through the entirety of the winter it won't turn green again until the fall uh spring but uh, during that time, if we could have ourselves some kind of a supplement, a, a different kind of a grass that can grow to 
keep the babies. Okay, you know what, my friends? I'm. <sighs> we like to have a supplement for all of the babies during the cooler winter months. Of course, we have dry hay. We've learned the power and the nutritional value in keeping green alfalfa hay, which is very expensive, but the animals love it. What we have to be very careful for though, is if you give the horses too much of the rye grass, then it can cr create problems. Uh, there's no better expert than this one right over here. Rocky, you just you, 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 shit up till I get out of here. Hey, what is the issue with giving horses rye grass? Why and how does it get them sick? So it's the sugar content that's in it because it's fresh. It's annual, so it's brand new. It only grows one time and one time only. And when it grows, the sugar content is so high that it can cause them to have laminitis or even founder and then potentially affect blood sugar. So not things. colicky? It can, it can make them colicky Okay, well. good. So I so I'm sort of right so, there. I mean, there's just all kinds of things. Ryegrass is just not, it's not the best for horses. So we have to be careful where we plant that ryegrass so our horses are not There's going to be a lot inundated. of people that say that ryegrass is fine for horses. It says so. Some, not ours. And we we had to learn that lesson. The hard the way. The really hard way. Yeah, the really. These chickens are driving me crazy. Close that door right now. I can't stand this. Survivor. I'm a survivor, survivor. Survivor. Let's find out when you spend the day in our shoes. All you creators, our sanctuaries ring. Who will win the title? Well, it could be you. Survivor, survivor. I'm a survivor.